deep in the remote wilderness of coastal Siberia, a phantom lurks. Known in legend as Amba, meaning God and devil. We know it today as the Siberian tiger. The tiger skirts the edges of our imagination, a symbol of strength, power, and beauty. Yet despite its fierce reputation, the Siberian tiger is dangerously close to extinction. Less than 400 of these great cats remain in the wild. Now, wildlife biologists are using science to save the wildest creature on Earth. An international team of Russian and American scientists seeks to better understand the tiger. Sort of either straight towards the hill or a little bit to the right. Their efforts may be the tiger's last, best chance at survival. If the tiger can be saved, it would mean protection for all that exist in the shadow of the tiger. Winters in far eastern Russia are long and harsh. Frigid air from the heart of the continent grips the land in snow and ice. By late spring, tropical air off the Sea of Japan warms the land. Icy winters give way to golden summers, and life flourishes. A vast, unbroken forest, known as the Russian taiga, blankets much of the region. It is the largest intact forest in the world and the last stronghold for wild Siberian tigers. Weighing up to 800 pounds, the Siberian tiger is the largest cat in the world, nearly twice the size of an adult lion. Born of snow and ice, the Siberian tiger can sprint through the forest at 50 miles an hour. It has thrived in this remote wilderness for thousands of years, surviving on instinct and finely honed behavior. The Siberian tiger once numbered in the thousands, ranging from Eastern Russia to South Korea. But poaching and habitat destruction are taking their toll. Today, less than 400 Siberian tigers exist in the wild. And these are found almost exclusively along a narrow band of mountains in coastal Siberia. The Sikoti Alin Biosphere Reserve lies at the heart of tiger country. It is the largest wildlife sanctuary in the Russian Far East, encompassing more than a thousand square miles of forested mountains, clear rivers, and unbroken coastline. At the edge of a forest glade, roe deer graze. They remain alert, knowing that out there, moving silently through the forest, a cat is on the prowl. It is a tigress seeking out her prey.
She will not make a kill today, but must soon, as she has another mouth to feed. This six-month-old tiger cub is named Larisha. Her mother, Katya. They are part of an in-depth study into the secretive lives of Siberian tigers. Oh, he's right down in the creek bottom, brother. Linda Curley and John Goodrich are a husband and wife research team coordinating the efforts of the Siberian Tiger Project, a joint Russian and American study conducted by the Hornacker Wildlife Institute. Based at the University of Idaho, the Hornacker Institute studies threatened and endangered species around the world. For John and Linda, studying tigers in Russia's remote wilderness is the opportunity of a lifetime. It baffles me that there, there's actually a mammal that exists that is orange with black stripes. So first of all, they're, they're beautiful, and we don't get to see them very often. But when we do get a glimpse of them, it makes our job everything worth, you know, just everything worthwhile. I think we have a wonderful opportunity to protect tigers, to conserve tigers, and it's really exciting to be a part of that and hopefully contribute to that. I love the woods and I love the wilderness, and the more wild it is, the better it is. I, one of my favorite places in the whole world is Huntimi Beach, where you're more likely to see a tiger track on the beach than a human footprint. When I get out in the forest and, and I have my backpack on and I'm out for a week at a time, I'm doing what I love and to me it's, it's just as much like a vacation as it is like work. The thing that I love about field biology is learning how other species, besides humans, interact with each other, how they live, and uh, just how they make a living. And uh, I like seeing it firsthand. I like being in the field. John and Linda rarely see the animals they study. Tigers are secretive animals, and you just can't, you can't just sit around and watch them. So we have to use radio telemetry in order to answer some of these questions. And these questions are critical to Siberian tiger conservation. John and Linda are using radio telemetry to unlock the Siberian tiger's elusive nature. Scientists are now able to determine a tiger's home range size, eating habits, and social structure. Little by little, a picture of tiger society is emerging. In order to use radio telemetry, the scientists must first get a collar on a tiger. To capture a new tiger, the scientists use thick cabled snares. They place the snares along trails frequently used by adult tigers. The thick cables are ideal, allowing the scientists to capture a tiger without injuring it. Snare loop lays over the spring like that. Tiger walks along, he's gonna step on this trigger. Cut. And then the cable is attached to the tree and everything will be covered up. Several snares have been set. They will be checked daily. Now, it's a waiting game. Weeks can go by without a capture. Joining the team is Russian biologist Igor Nikolaevich. Igor probably knows more about Siberian tigers than anyone. He's been studying the great cat for more than 30 years. Luck is on their side. Only days after the snares are set, a tiger is captured. Our biggest concern is the safety of the animal. Has the animal somehow been hurt in the snare? Has something happened to it? Is it very agitated? We stopped about 50 yards away from her, loaded the darts into the gun. And then approached uh, slowly and, and quietly. 
The first approach is the most dangerous because the scientists have no way of telling how securely the tiger is held in the snare. Yeah, it's dangerous. Shu is probably more agitated than any tiger that I've seen. 